Geothermal drilling in Campi Flegre could spell disaster, ran a recent viral warning. The claim was that punching a hole into Italy's restless Phlegrean fields might trigger maximum magnitude earthquakes, phreatic explosions and lethal gas release. The imagery is sensational, a drill bit acting as a detonator in one of the world's most hazardous calderas, unleashing catastrophe on Naples and its surrounding suburbs. But reality, as often, is less theatrical and more complex. Campi Flegre is dangerous, yes. It is restless, yes. But the idea that any attempt at scientific or geothermal drilling would automatically spark an apocalypse does not hold up under scrutiny. The latest studies show a more nuanced picture, one in which the risks and possible benefits depend heavily on method, monitoring and context. Campi Flegre, the burning fields of antiquity, is not just another volcano. It is a supervolcano, a collapsed caldera that once expelled hundreds of cubic kilometers of magma in eruptions that shaped Mediterranean history. Today, the vast basin lies beneath western Naples and Pozzuoli, where nearly a million people live atop fumaroles, steaming vents and shifting ground. For decades, scientists have documented the phenomenon of Bredeseism slow uplift and subsidence of the ground at rates of centimetres per month, accompanied by earthquake swarms. In the early 1980s, the city of Pozzuoli was evacuated after the ground rose more than one and a half metres in two years, cracking buildings and terrifying residents. The cycle has repeated in recent decades, with GPS instruments showing steady uplift again since the early 2000s. What drives this unrest? The simple story of magma intrusion has been replaced by a more detailed mechanism. A series of recent studies, including laboratory experiments at Stanford, revealed that the key lies in a sealed geothermal reservoir beneath Pozzuoli. Rainwater and groundwater percolate down into this hot aquifer, where they are heated far above boiling point. A caprock above the reservoir acts like the lid of a mocha pot, impermeable, prone to self-healing fractures. As pressure builds, the rock eventually cracks. The water flashes explosively into steam, and earthquakes rattle the area. Sometimes these bursts reach the surface as violent, steam-driven eruptions. Historical accounts of Monte Nuovo in 1538 describe exactly such phenomena. Fractures opening, cold and hot water bursts, clouds of boiling steam. The upshot is sobering. Campi Flegre today is like a loaded spring, a sealed reservoir accumulating pressure with periodic ruptures that shake the land. GPS and seismic networks confirm that as the uplift accelerates, the earthquakes grow slightly stronger with magnitude three events already rattling modern suburbs. The caldera is inherently prone to phreatic explosions, which scientists warn are difficult to predict in time or size. This background makes the question of drilling highly sensitive. Critics argue that boring into such a system could be like tapping a pressure cooker. Yet the historical record tells a different story. Italy has, in fact, drilled Campi Flegre before. In the 1970s and 80s, a major geothermal campaign sunk dozens of wells, some as deep as three kilometres. These operations took place even as the Brady seismic crisis peaked between 1982 and 1984. Far from triggering disaster, the drilling coincided with natural unrest, yet did not produce unusual earthquakes or eruptions. Geologists later concluded that the campaign did not raise particular concerns during that upheaval. Some wells even re-injected fluids to stabilise pressures. There is no evidence that drilling aggravated the crisis. That record underpins arguments in favour of exploring geothermal energy in the region. Campi Flegre is hot. Some wells found water at 200 degrees Celsius only a couple of kilometres down. Harnessing this heat could, in theory, provide renewable power and district heating for Naples, reducing dependence on fossil fuels. The challenge has been more practical than apocalyptic. The brines are corrosive, fouling pipes and machinery, and the gases are difficult to condense. In short, the obstacles are engineering and economics, not volcanic Armageddon. A review of Italy's past projects concluded that the elements at the expense of the use of heat derive mostly from technological problems, rather than the real danger of triggering a chain reaction that even generates an eruption. Still. The caldera is not to be underestimated. 
A Nature Communications study published in 2025 mapped a gas-rich reservoir about two kilometres down, capped by ductile rocks at one to two kilometres. The researchers described a rigid shell over a charged tank where seismic swarms start in the caprock and propagate downward. They warned that both earthquakes and phreatic explosions remain plausible scenarios in hazard assessments. The implication is clear. Drilling could intersect this delicate balance. Punching into the reservoir might relieve pressure in a controlled way, or it might puncture the lid and dump pressure catastrophically. Laboratory tests reinforce the caution. In Stanford Rock experiments, once the caprock cracked, even slightly, the trapped water explosively turned to steam. The setup produced booming bursts like miniature explosions. It is not hard to imagine the real caldera responding in similar fashion. This is why volcanologists remain wary. But here is where nuance matters. Drilling is not a monolith. A geothermal well designed to re-inject fluids and monitor pressures is not the same as an uncontrolled puncture. Decades of global geothermal experience from Iceland to Japan show that with careful engineering, even high-temperature volcanic zones can host power plants without triggering cataclysmic events. The earthquakes induced by such projects are usually small, magnitude 1 to 3, and fade when pumping stops. The largest geothermal-induced quakes globally have barely reached magnitude 4, comparable to what Campi Flegre naturally produces in its unrest cycles. Some researchers even argue that managed extraction could stabilise the caldera. By withdrawing fluids, they say, you reduce the very pressure that drives bradyseism and quakes. Geophysicist Tiziana Venorio, herself a native of Pozzuoli, has described this as preventive healthcare for the volcano, draining excess groundwater to ease symptoms before they escalate. In this view, drilling could be part of hazard mitigation, not merely a hazard. The counterpoint is that Campi Fligre's plumbing is fickle. The caprock reseals itself quickly, meaning any relief may be temporary. You might bleed off steam today, but the system repressurizes within months. Worse, meddling with the fluids could shift the chemistry and pathways in unpredictable ways. Gas content is already trending more magmatic, with increasing sulphur signatures detected in fumaroles. That hints at deeper processes feeding the system, beyond the reach of surface wells. If the deeper magma is awakening, tinkering at the margins may not prevent escalation. Gas hazards are another concern. Campi Flegre vents already emit hundreds of tons of carbon dioxide daily, along with hydrogen sulphide and radon. If drilling intersected a high-pressure gas pocket, it could vent suddenly. Carbon dioxide is heavier than air. A dense cloud flowing down streets could suffocate people, as seen in Cameroon's infamous Lake Neos disaster. Hydrogen sulphide at a few hundred parts per million is immediately lethal. Engineers design flaring and venting systems to prevent such scenarios, but failure cannot be excluded. Even a brief uncontrolled release could be hazardous in the urban setting of Naples. Despite all this, no major commercial project is underway. The only recent drilling effort was the Campi Flegre Deep Drilling Project, begun in 2012. That research borehole reached 500 metres at Bagnoli, confirming the extreme geothermal gradient but stopping well short of tapping the reservoir. Its purpose was scientific to gather samples, measure in situ stresses, and test monitoring technologies. It produced no accidents, no swarms, no eruptions. Instead, it provided valuable data for hazard assessment. Grandiose proposals have surfaced from time to time, like a 2013 plan touting power equivalent to four nuclear plants, but they remain on paper. The truth is that any attempt to commercialize Campi Flegre's heat would face extraordinary scrutiny. Italian authorities classify the caldera as a civil protection issue. Any project would be vetted by volcanologists, seismologists and emergency planners. In practice, the science-first approach has prevailed. Careful study rather than exploitation. The debate crystallises around risk versus reward. On one hand, Campi Flegre offers a tantalising source of renewable energy and a natural laboratory for volcano science. On the other... It is a simmering system whose phreatic temperament makes it one of the most dangerous volcanoes on Earth. No peer-reviewed study has demonstrated that drilling would trigger a catastrophic eruption.
but all caution that interference carries uncertainties. There is no precedent anywhere for human drilling unleashing a super-eruption. There are, however, precedents for geothermal projects operating safely in volcanic terrains. This leaves us with perception. Viral warnings thrive on worst-case imagery. Megaquakes, killer gas clouds, eruptions swallowing Naples. The science paints a subtler picture. Drilling could in principle provoke localised steam bursts or micro-seismicity, but managed properly it could also relieve pressures and provide crucial data. The real risk is not Armageddon, but mishandling, sloppy engineering, poor monitoring or political haste. Done right, it is unlikely to produce the mega-disasters that headlines predict. The controversy surrounding geothermal drilling at Campi Flegre is not just about geology, it is also about public trust, history, and how societies weigh risk against opportunity. When scientists and engineers discuss the idea of drilling into the restless caldera, they are not simply calculating rock stresses or thermal gradients. They are negotiating the balance between fear and innovation in one of the most densely populated volcanic regions on Earth. For many residents of Naples and Pozzuoli, the memories of forced evacuation during the 1980s are still vivid. Entire families had to abandon their homes when the Brady seismic crisis cracked streets and split walls. To this day, many locals feel the government overreacted, while others believe officials underplayed the true danger. Against that backdrop, proposals to deliberately drill into the very system that displaced them sound reckless. Public meetings on the subject often feature heated arguments where residents voice concerns that scientists are playing with fire in their backyard. Yet history suggests that drilling into volcanic systems is not inherently disastrous. Across the globe, countries with active volcanoes have pursued geothermal projects with varying degrees of success. In Iceland, wells penetrate the flanks of volcanic calderas to harvest steam and hot water for electricity. In Japan, Hot spring regions near calderas power turbines while still serving as tourist destinations. In Kenya, drilling within the East African Rift Valley, where magma rises near the surface, provides a significant share of the country's power supply. These cases show that human technology can coexist with volcanism, provided that projects are carefully managed. The differences, however, are crucial. Campi Flegre is not just another volcano. It is a caldera with a reputation for sudden steam-driven explosions. Unlike magma eruptions, which often provide warning signs such as tremor, deformation and gas emissions, phreatic explosions can strike with little or no notice. They happen when superheated water flashes into steam, fracturing rock and blasting debris upward. Such events are often localised, measured in tens or hundreds of metres, but in an urban environment even a small blast could be deadly. A geothermal well intersecting such a pocket might inadvertently trigger one. This is why the role of monitoring is so heavily emphasised. Modern drilling projects no longer operate in isolation. Every step, from seismic imaging to pressure testing, is tracked in real time. Wells are equipped with sensors that measure temperature, gas chemistry and stress. If anomalies are detected, say, a sudden pressure spike or an unexpected change in water chemistry, Operations can be halted before escalation. In this sense, drilling itself can act as an extension of hazard monitoring, giving scientists direct access to the caldera's behaviour instead of relying only on surface measurements. Some experts frame this as a choice between ignorance and controlled knowledge. Without drilling, much about the inner workings of Campi Flegre remains speculative. Geophysicists can model the reservoir, but the exact pressures and compositions remain estimates. Drilling provides hard data. It can confirm whether the uplift is driven by gas saturation, magma input, or hydrothermal pressurization. In turn, this helps refine evacuation plans and hazard maps. In this light, drilling is not provocation, but preparation. The counter-argument is that no amount of monitoring eliminates risk. The caldera is inherently unstable, and every intervention is a gamble. Even if a geothermal project is intended only for science, the possibility of unexpected side effects, such as opening a new fracture system or destabilising the caprock, cannot be ruled out. Some critics warn that once a borehole is drilled, the system may react in non-linear ways, 
creating feedbacks no one anticipated. The fear is not that drilling will cause a super eruption, but that it might trigger localized accidents that spiral into social panic in a region already on edge. That social dimension is as important as the geological one. In a city where millions live within evacuation zones, even a minor incident could ignite fear and misinformation. A steam vent erupting at a drill site might be scientifically minor, but in the public imagination, it could look like the start of an eruption. Trust in authorities is already fragile. Mishandling communications could prove as damaging as the event itself. One intriguing angle is whether controlled fluid extraction could actually stabilize Campi Flegre. If the uplift is driven primarily by water pressurization beneath the caprock, then systematically bleeding off that water might reduce stress and lower the risk of phreatic blasts. Advocates describe this as managing the caldera rather than leaving it entirely to nature. Detractors counter that such management is hubris, likening it to attempting to defuse a bomb without knowing the wiring. At best, the relief might be temporary. At worst, it might destabilize other zones. The truth likely lies somewhere in between. Small-scale drilling can safely provide knowledge, but large-scale exploitation is premature. The technology to fully harness Campi Flegre's heat exists, but the social license to do so does not. For now, science rather than commerce defines the conversation. Researchers continue to propose boreholes in carefully selected areas designed to probe rather than pump. The data they gather helps refine eruption forecasts and contributes to the global understanding of caldera dynamics. What cannot be ignored is the long-term perspective. Campi Flegre is not going away. It has erupted in the past and it will erupt again, whether in decades, centuries or millennia. The challenge for Naples is not to eliminate the hazard, but to coexist with it. Drilling, if done, is one piece of a larger strategy that includes monitoring networks, civil protection plans and community education. The aim is not to conquer the volcano, but to live safely in its shadow. And that may be the most important corrective to the apocalyptic warnings circulating online. No, geothermal drilling is not going to trigger maximum magnitude earthquakes or super eruptions out of nowhere. There is no scientific precedent for human activity unleashing events on that scale. What drilling can do is produce small quakes, alter local gas emissions, or, if mishandled, trigger minor phreatic bursts. These are manageable risks, provided that projects are transparent, rigorously monitored, and scientifically justified. The real danger is not a drill bit, but complacency. If public fear paralyzes science, Campi Flegre remains opaque, leaving Naples vulnerable to surprise. If panic overblown by headlines leads to distrust, even well-intentioned safety measures might fail for lack of cooperation. The challenge, then, is balance. Learning enough to protect lives without stirring unnecessary alarm. In the end, Campi Flegre is a paradox. It is both a threat and a resource, a hazard and a laboratory. Drilling into it is neither an invitation to apocalypse nor a guarantee of safety. It is a tool, powerful, risky, and deeply human in its ambition. Whether that tool is wielded wisely depends not only on geologists and engineers, but on communities, governments, and the willingness to face reality without distortion. What is certain is this. The Phlegrian fields will continue to shift, breathe, and remind us that the earth beneath Naples is alive. Whether we dare to drill or not, the story of Campi Flegre will unfold on its own timescale, long after headlines fade. If you found this deep dive useful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe so more people can explore the truth behind sensational headlines and understand the real science shaping our world.